Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to our webcast today. Um, my name is uh, Manfred Rosendahl and I'm responsible for presets at point. Before we start the actual presentation, I would like to mention a few organizational notes. Um, your microphones are muted and I cannot hear you. Um, if you have questions, um, you can easily use the chat function at any time. And then after the presentation, we will answer your questions. The topic of my presentation is intelligent and transparent file archiving. As you all know, the amount of unstructured data increases. And when you analyze your existing data, you will find out the majority is inactive or, or cold data. Typically, um, about 80% of the data is inactive, which means it has not been accessed for a long time. But um, never, nevertheless, it is stored on the same high available, high performance, very expensive primary storage as the active data. And it massively impacts your backup window. Um, this proportion of about 80% can be offloaded to a cheaper storage technology to free up the expensive primary storage. Um, besides um, this increasing data volume, um, it, is, it is a challenge that specific data has to be archived for a long period of time because of legal requirements and it has to be protected against manipulation or malicious deletion. Okay, so let this be said as a short introduction. If you don't know us yet, a few facts about Point Software and Systems. Um, Point is an independent software vendor for data and storage management um, founded in 1994. Our entire, our, our entire team, the product development, the uh, support team, the sales, pre-sales, we are all located um, in Germany in Siegen, um, which, which is about an hour from Cologne. We have small customers who manage a few terabytes with our software solutions, but also very large customers with uh, several petabytes, and uh, the largest is uh, Daimler. Um, we have a worldwide reseller network and we work closely with major storage vendors like NetApp, um, Dell EMC, Quantum, or uh, Hitachi Ventura. Um, we address the challenges I have mentioned at the beginning with our point storage manager, um, which, which is a file-based tiering and archiving solution. The basic uh, concept is quickly summarized. The point storage manager, with his, which is a Windows-based software solution, allows you to move inactive files from your primary storage um, to a capacity optimized storage or um, to an archive storage. For this, we analyze the file system, the existing file system, then we copy the data um, which matches to the defined rules, to the archive storage. And then finally, we replace the original file on the primary storage with a small placeholder. Um, the rules and policies can be very ex extensive, so you can define a lot of criteria. In most cases, customers define rules uh, based on age. So, for example, old files that ha have not been accessed for 30 days uh, should be moved. Uh, and as uh, target systems, we support um, disk-based systems, tape libraries, um, special warm appliances, optical media, and object storage like uh, NetApp Storage Grid or uh, Claudian Hyperstore. Um, and you can figure up to four archive devices in parallel, um, but I will come to this later. Um, 
to to explain the architecture um i i start uh, at the upper left um of this slide here so um currently we support windows file servers with our own agent we provide an integration for dell emc unity based on the file mover api and for um NetApp systems, we use the um, F policy. Um, for these primary storages, uh, primary storage systems, we provide the so-called stubbing method, um, which is fully transparent and uh, yeah, which is fully transparent for the application and, and the end user. Um, since one of the latest releases, we also support symbolic links. Um, which which provides a very similar look um, to the original file. Um, this way, we support, for example, Dell EMC Isilon source systems. And for all other systems, we provide our web link service, um, which replaces the original file by an HTML or URL file. Um, these are all active approaches where we collect data from a storage system using an agent or a specific interface. Um, our point archive file system um, is a passive approach. So we provide a file service ourselves, for example, to act as a warm storage, um, including retention management and so on, or to act as a cloud gateway. Um, we call this configuration level of uh, the point storage manager gateway. Um, Edition. So in, in this case, every new file um, stored in the file system um, is immediately archived and protected against changes. Um, at the bottom of the slide, you can see the supported target systems. Um, just to give you an abstract of what system we support, we support all major cloud providers, um, all as uh, three based object storage systems. Uh, we support tape libraries with LTO drives or the IBM enterprise drives. And of course, all disk devices directly attached or which can be accessed by an UNC pass. And um, important to know is we use our own implementation and drivers to connect to the devices. So we don't rely on any uh, third party software. Okay, so let me use this overview um, and the graphics to explain you the different ways to access um, the archive. Um, the preferred uh, method is the so called stubbing, um, which is transparent to the user. A stub differs only in the size on disk to the original file and depending on the operating system, the icon can be a little different um, to indicate the file has been archived. Um, and when you open a file, um, it won't initiate a recall to the primary storage and we call this feature um, pass through. Yeah. And we have an integration um, to the previous versions uh, um, 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 in case you use uh, snapshots uh, on your storage system. Um, our web links is a method we can provide on any NAS system. Um, in this case, we replace the original file by an UL or HTML file. So you can download it by your uh, default web browser um, so th this is an indirect file system access and we use single sign on, uh, so you do not need to authenticate um, additionally. Um, we also support symbolic links, um, which are very similar to the original file, but um, it is not that transparent uh, like a star. In addition, we uh, have our web client, which is a portal with the original file and folder structure. 
and it provides search capabilities. So, uh, and you, uh, you can combine um, the, the web client uh, with a different method um, I've explained before, or you can use it um, when you want to completely remove the original file from the um, primary storage without leaving a placeholder. And finally, we, we have our um, so-called um, uh, data, data browser. Um, this, this um, interface is, or uh, yeah, this interface is for the IT administrators and it has a very powerful, uh, it has very powerful features like a restore option, or you can see the retention period uh, for each single file and the specific um, container uh, in which the file is stored. Okay, and uh, yeah, th this graphic here illustrates the workflow. Uh, first of all, we copy the files from the primary storage, um, from the primary storage or local file system um, into a secondary or archive storage. And then optionally, customers can set a retention period, uh, so for example, for 10 years. And um, important to know is th this period can only be extended, um, but not uh, shortened. During the re uh, retention period, um, files cannot be deleted from um, the archive. Um, but to, to comply with um, certain legal regulations such as uh, GDPR, um, we, are, we offer uh, the so-called privilege delete, um, which enables special accounts to delete files before the retention period expires. And um, this action uh, is of course locked. Yeah, so we we have a, pr a, pr a protocol um, about this action. Okay, and um, the next step, which can also be done at later time, um, uh, the uh, original file in the primary storage is replaced uh, by a stop by a stop or a link. In case of a read access, the file is made available directly um, without restoring it. And this is what, what we call a uh, pass through on a uh, read. If the user changes a file, um, it is stored on the primary storage with, with all its modifications. And then when the file has aged or matches the rules again, um, it will be archived uh, with the next archiving job and a new version will be created in the archive. This way, um, the original version is protected and the point storage manager creates a file history. Um, it is very important to know how we store archived files. Um, when we archive files, um, we pack them up into container files and the, the, um, the maximum um, container file size can be adjusted. So for example, you can set it to uh, four gigabyte um, depending on the um, uh, archive uh, storage you use. And um, the container format is uh, UDF, which is a uh, standard format. And you can read it without um, any special tools. So you can read it to, with a Windows client, Linux, or even a Mac OS client. Um, in production operation, uh, operation this isn't, ne isn't ne ne necessary, but of course it is good to know. So there's no vendor lock. Yeah. And as you can imagine, uh, handling a few thousand of large container files is much easier than millions of very small files. And especially when you migrate your archive to a new system, maybe maybe in a few years, um, this will help. And yeah, the, 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 the day will come. As I've mentioned before, you can write the same data set uh, to up to four archive devices. 
And um, this way you could uh, write your data, for example, to multiple clouds or tape uh, or a tape device in parallel. And so you can reduce the dependency on a single technology or a single provider. And by setting priorities, you can define from where to read by default. So um, this setting is very helpful to read from the fastest um, archive and to reduce the egress cost in case uh, you're using an, a cloud provider uh, as your archive uh, system. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and this leads me to our archive migration. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the same way you can write to multiple archive devices, you can add a new one in a few years. And then, then, you, uh, then you use our internal archive migration feature. Um, so for example, maybe you want to switch from a tape-based archive um, uh, to an object storage or a cloud provider, for example. Um, the entire process runs in the background without any interruption for the user. And you can start it with uh, just a few steps. So uh, first of all, you configure the new um, device in the point storage manager. Then you choose the source and target system. And finally, um, you start the migration job. The process um, is of course uh, accelerated by the large container files I've uh, uh, explained before. And after the migration, you get a protocol and then finally you can remove your own. Uh, your old device, yeah, and that's uh, that is uh, is it um, is very very easy to to migrate your archive. So this way you can move from one cloud to another or um, to new uh, complete new technology in the future. So um, the files to be archived can be defined centralized by the IT administrator um, using rules, um, or the files can be defined directly by the end user. So um, for the second approach, um, we have our user controlled archiving. Um, um, and uh, therefore we provide a software extension for the end user system. So um, for, for that, the IT administrator predefines some templates based on the, the same policy framework we have. And um, then the, uh, these options will be shown on the end user's machine. Uh, and the user can then simply right click on a file in the Windows Explorer and then, for example, archive it or move it to the cloud, you know, as you can see um, in the uh, screenshot. Okay, yeah, and yeah, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, before we move on to your questions, I would like to mention our website um, where we, you can download our uh, point file system analyzer. Um, which is a free tool um, to get an overview about the ratio of active and inactive files in your environment. So if you want to analyze your data, um, feel free to check it out. And yeah, now I would uh, be glad to answer any questions you might have. And uh, so, so let me check if questions have come in. Okay, here's a question about um, what, what happens if a file is larger than the, um, the container size we have um, configured. So um, if this is the case, the file um, is, is split and stored in two or more containers. Yeah. So, um, but, but it's important if you um, generally um, have very large files, 
then you should increase the container size accordingly. Okay, here's a, another question. question. Um, the question related to the um, data access to offline tapes. So uh, tapes which are removed uh, from the library. Um, so um, the, the, um, our point storage manager has an integrated offline data management. And uh, yeah, then uh, when you remove a tape, a tape from the library, um, it will automatically notify the IT administrator um, to insert the specific uh, tape um, because there um, uh, uh, has been an attempt to access the data. Yeah, so we have an um, uh, offline management included in our solution. Okay, I don't see any more questions right now. Okay, no more questions. So, um, but uh, if you have any further questions, um, please do not hesitate contact us um, and of course uh, we would also like to offer you um, the the, op the option of a live demo yeah and uh, uh, of course uh, a proof of concept at your site or at uh, your customer um, so finally um, I would now like to point out the upcoming webcasts um, at the beginning of September we will discuss the question, how secure um, is object storage? And in uh, mid, mid uh, October, we will show in a live demo how to set up a centralized long-term um, archive um, using the uh, point storage manager. Okay, then thank you very much for your time and uh, have a nice day. Bye.